You're now listening to the Check 2 Studio Podcast with your hosts, Austin and Trevor, bringing you the latest in video marketing and production. Oh man, that looks good. I'm excited. It looks so good. I'm putting it back on screen. Today. Trevor, no, you listen to me. I want you to tell us what we're doing today. Today, we're going to be talking about Kreiderman's. That's right, Kreiderman's Barbecue. Oh, shit, dude. You're wearing the shirt. That's right. So, behind the scenes of a food restaurant shoot. Now, this place is amazing. So, uh, I mean, I think it's great, but what is your opinion? Trevor, this is the best barbecue restaurant in the world. The best? Dude, once you get this through your head, it's the best. I mean, it's good. I don't know about the best. I mean, it's it's very good. Dude, I'm going to say this once. You're wrong. It's not the best? It's it's great. Oh, that's it. I'm quitting. I'm out of here. All right, Quit. get out of here. You can say this ain't the best. I'm giving you one chance to take that back. How about we roll the video, and then you tell me what you think? Okay, that's fair enough. All right. You know what? On that note, I'm going to go ahead and play this. I'm going to roll that beautiful brisket footage that's right um yeah and then we'll talk about it then i'm gonna send you to your room without dinner without kreiderman's dinner mm. i'm gonna send you to your room without dinner without kreiderman's see how you feel about that well let's just see four minutes all right four minute piece the brisket biography and go While most are fast asleep, for those on the journey to create the best brisket, work is just beginning. It's 1.04 a.m. and Chad is here early to start the 30 plus hour journey of culinary alchemy these briskets will take to be transformed from a tough cast off piece of meat to black gold. To endure the 14 to 16 hours of heat and smoke that it'll face, the beef must be trimmed to uniform specifications. Chad selects a pile of seasoned oak that his team sourced out and split. He starts with smaller, drier pieces of wood to build the foundation. Greasy butcher paper that blanketed yesterday's briskets is used to ignite the flame. Throughout the cook, selecting logs that have the appropriate moisture content and size will become increasingly important to fuel the fire and maintain the desired temperature. The meat is the real star in quality barbecue. A subtle rub of kosher salt and coarse black pepper is all it takes. There is no replacement for experience. Arranging the beef effectively on the cooker takes time on the tools. The variables in this process are near infinite. No two cuts of meat are the same. Humidity, ambient temperature, and wetness of the wood are just a few wrenches that can turn this process sideways. After being on the pit for approximately three hours, the briskets will be repositioned according to their individual needs. The meat will be sprayed down once an hour in order to cool the surface temperature. Time for a fresh set of eyes. Reinforcements will receive a quick briefing to ensure a seamless transition to keep this train on its tracks. The physical examination NASA astronauts experience is nothing compared to what this meat goes through. These briskets are showing signs that they're ready for the last step of the cook. Each cut of beef will be wrapped in order to insulate and tenderize while in its final hours on the pit. Every night, we're once again reminded that every cut of brisket is unique. This is no recipe in the cookbook, this is an art. The tenderness of the meat can only be determined by feel and that alone is true artisanal barbecue. Time to tuck this brisket in for a good night's rest. This beef doesn't need a bedtime story to sleep well. But if he thought it would help, you can bet your ass Chad would have someone out there with a copy of Three Little Pigs. Letting the meat rest in this hot holding cabinet is of utmost importance. Without this step, 
kiss that juicy, tender texture goodbye. The fine folks that travel from all over to Kreiderman's Barbecue may not know what all went into crafting this brisket, but they know where to go when only the best will do. It'd be a real shame if you just took our word for it. Come on down and prove it to yourself. Look, Trevor, I'm going to take this. I'm. It's time. It's time to settle this once for all. You telling me somebody sits down for 30 hours to make your brisket and you're going to stand there and say they're not the best? I just said What's it maybe. take to satisfy you, dude? Maybe. It's the best I've ever had, but maybe there's something better. I was going to say, don't, don't nobody spend no time making Trevor no food. You can sit down all night. I slept in my truck. While they were making this stuff overnight, 30 hours to bring this to your plate. And you're going to stand there telling me that it's not the best. I just said it's bullshit, dude. I got doubts. Bull crap. I haven't traveled the world. This is bull crap. Well, let's just see how you made it. Let's see how what put into showcasing this 30 hour brisket. I'm not sure. you Known as the brisket biography. You don't deserve it. Who came up with that name? I don't know. Yeah, it was me. That's who came up with it. How about this for a second? Why don't we talk about the purpose of this piece? Because obviously this isn't a television commercial. No, nope. it's way too long. That's a story. This is well. Let's let's uh let's get serious for a minute, Trevor. The the purpose of this piece. What's it for? Where is this going to go? Who's going to see this? So, Kreiderman's is one location in an area called Coco Village, but they're going to be open a second location and. Not a lot of people understand the hard work that goes into making this brisket, which really is the best. It's without a doubt the best in the county. But people don't know what goes into all this, and the owner, Chad Kreiderman, wants everybody to know. And especially at the second location, which may not have access to being able to just pull the guests. Any given time you go there at lunch, Chad will be there. He will show you how it's made. He'll bring you behind the restaurant and say, check this out. These are briskets in the making. That's right. This is meat. That's right. Unfortunately, the second location, they won't be able to do that. Um, and so they really wanted a piece that could show all the hard work that goes into this so people could really appreciate this brisket for what it is. You know, when I'm there, I do see him taking people back a lot of times. He'll be there and they'll be in line and, you know... How how often do you go to Sunny's? They take you in the back to no, show you. They don't want There's nothing going back, back there. there. Yeah. There's nothing to see back That's there. Right. And uh, no, but he's constantly. People come in. Uh, one of the times we were there, I think getting a few pickup shots, or maybe it was later. They had a uh, a father and son that lived in two different towns, and Cryderman's was somewhere between. You remember that? And they yeah. actually were coming to meet. That's right. The meet is. <laughs> The meat is bringing them together, Trevor. The meat for the meat. Tell that, okay? It's a good story. That's and it was true. So um, basically, the purpose of this is they're going to be playing this on loop in their restaurant, and they have a second location opening up. But all of this is still going to take place in the one location, and the meat at the other location is going to be brought down daily mm -hmm. um, because this is such a process, as you've seen. How, how this goes with time stamped 104 a.m you know two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock rocking around the clock to bring this to trevor he still ain't satisfied just saying yeah he's I'm got also, the shirt on so i'm, I'm also thinking frozen what's dude, going are you, on here are you trolling man what happened to me i'm just i'm in trouble there, there we you go. go now trevor, are I'm you trolling action. you're wearing the oh, shirt great. saying it's not the best look now i'm covered up you're 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 wearing the shirt saying it's not the best but you, I, I'm saying it's, I don't know if it's the best in the universe. You're a troll. You're a troll. Listen, you bring me some of the other bests in the universe, and then I can make a call on that. Well, you know what? Let's just see how it's shot. And you're going to get to see even more of the restaurant from these behind-the-scenes I want you photos. to see that this is barbecue. See the temperature? It's clearly into barbecue. And that's all they need, right? I, what's, I don't, can't tell over here. That's I done purely aesthetic. Yeah, I this I I got this shot separate. I want to know what this says right here, but I blew the highlights, dude. Um, Actually, I don't even I blew the highlights. I don't know what I did. It's I think not it's just focus. out of focus. Just a really shallow depth of field. The world may never know. 
So uh, this is going to be playing in their restaurants. Mm-hmm. Now, um, obviously, for, for a longer piece like this, you know, in the budgets we're working in, every single shot's not, like, like storyboarded, scripted out. We didn't light every single thing. We kind of ran around during the early morning. I guess we'll just take it shot by shot. The very first thing, we, we did this right when we, we arrived around, like, midnight. But before this was recorded, what happened? Uh, there was a lot of planning before this was recorded. Well, okay, so okay, recorded, oh, I see. It was two a.m. But all right, I know what you're. I know what you're getting at. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and fill them in. When we we sat down with with Todd and Amy, the owners of Cryderman's, the geniuses of barbecue, mm-hmm. and they they kind of walked us through the process, and they said, you know, it's gonna be around the clock. And I said, well, there's a lot of pieces that I've got to show, and. I'm going to learn a lot about it, but I'm not going to be intimately familiar the way you guys are. Yeah. So we decided that the best way to go about doing this would be for him to write the process out and for us to write a, uh, the sound, uh, the, voiceover the voiceover script ahead of time. So we got the voiceover yeah. first, and then I could listen to the voiceover, drop that onto a timeline, and then then decide, like, I could go in and write, like, I want to be seeing this, I want to be seeing this, I want to be seeing this. So that way, you know, the story is going to make sense. We don't have to worry about that, you know, if the story is going to make sense later because we had the voiceover and I know I could I could decide exactly what on-screen elements that I would want uh, to put into this. And I have to say, like, the shoot, even though it was a long shoot and, and all that, uh, it was pretty smooth. And we had to go back for just one e- extra shot. We just missed one thing. We mm-hmm. went back, uh, got a pickup shot. Um but usually, you know, on shoots, especially like, you know, when we, we cover live events like weddings and stuff like that, you know, you're getting everything you can. You don't know where the story is going to take you yet. You know, you're going to record the speeches that happens at the end of the day after you've kind of already got everything. And then later in post, you kind of pull a story out of it. And we didn't want to risk that. You know, we always do a good job. We wanted to make sure this was going to be really good. It was going to be cohesive. Everybody uh, was going to be able to follow it. So we didn't want to – we wanted to, to pre-plan. And the pre-planning really, really – all the pre-production really made the, the shoot roll smoothly. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, we, sh- we showed up and we said, well, we need that first shot. In this first shot. You know what I'm going to do, Trevor? I, I just thought of it. I'm going to go in. I'm going to add crickets to this sound. Gonna, you know what? I didn't think about that till just now. Imagine the crickets. While most are fast asleep, I'm imagining them. for those on the journey to create the best brisket, work it. And this is this is truly in the middle of the night. This is when we first got there. Yeah, the Early. sleep was still in my eyes. The night was black without a moon, <laughs> and we were certainly all alone in this part of town, other than some sketchy people. Only the only people you're going to see out around this time are sketchy people. No, yeah. so we get the and first and those two shots. that are serious about ba- uh, barbecue. Just beginning. We got a little. Actually, it was in that first shot in the lens flare. It's 104 a.m. So, um, and I'll, I'll kind of just com- comment on uh, things as they go by. It is here early to start but uh, as, you know, as I was going through, I'm going to cover up the timestamps. You know, even though we, we had a plan, you know, there's that early morning. I slept, you know, a couple hours only because we're here. We're showing up at like, you know, midnight, one o'clock, whatever. And uh, Chad's already there going through his process, you know, that he's done a million times. Mm-hmm. But for me, I've never been there. I've never seen. So I'm like, you know, I just, I'm just desperate to find things to aim the camera at and hit record. So, um, and, you know, I, I set up some equipment. And we were basically running around with, you know, a couple of panels and that Aperture 120D. We actually, these are, I uh, forgot to mention on this shot, um, we've got some panels down here. Yep. And, uh they're just kind of shining up because that was all dark yeah, when we got there. Yeah, there's two panels there. And you'll notice these yellow lights here. These are lights that are colored like that so that bugs don't gather around them the way they would around like a, a regular light. Yeah, they were super yellow. And they actually work pretty good because I did not yeah. see a single bug going around those lights the yeah. whole entire time. It's true. Um, Ooh, and that little lens flare. Yeah, and do you want to go ahead? That was you. You were there. I was holding the camera. Go ahead and tell them what you were doing right there. You took the uh, the lens hood off, and I had just a little panel that was colored and just kind of followed the camera movement to create that light leak on the side there. And it adds a little nice touch because it almost looks, without a foreground element, it almost looks like a photo that we just kind of like 
digitally panned across. So we got to add a little bit of There's extra. There's a little bit of parallax that happens if you watch like the the planks of the fence and stuff. Yeah. Like it's definitely not a photo. Like and I was moving the camera around, um, but we but were kind of far a real away. Effect. Because people yeah. could see them and be like, oh, we did that in post. Yeah, nope. you could do that. I've done that in post, but that one's not. I just had Trevor kind of holding the, the panel there. Um, so then he's grabbing wood. We're on, got some panels laid out. So we're basically, we're trying to create that, you know, we can't light it up and make it look like daytime. You know, we want to make it look, you know, like it's fitting the rest of the, the time. And then you got a timestamp there that says uh, 104 a.m. a.m. And, uh, you know, he's getting the fire going. Choosing the wood is a big part of this process, as you hear him say. You have those behind-the-scene photos, right? Uh, there's some good photos here, so of these, too, kind of how you set this up. Let me see what I can find here. And uh, that's real hot where that door is, like real, real hot. I was afraid I was going to damage my stuff. Yeah, you are basically up in that furnace, and that particular part of the furnace is... 400 degrees like north of 400 degrees yeah so you see how those yellow lights are just lighting everything up yeah. you see the regular the lights of the town now um what were you using like i'm obviously using the a7s2 what were you uh what were you taking these behind the scenes photos because for the low light they look pretty good it's the a7 III. okay and i want to say it was on the 28 millimeter all of them but i cannot remember now Oh, here you go. That's what we were talking about before. Uh, and I'm there just cooking. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one that's right after that. Go to the 6-8 or whatever, 5-8. This is uh, me on the slider getting the yeah, shot of that wood mm -hmm. going by. But I think the photo you're talking about is uh, this one. You can really see. Yeah, you see the fire and you're just up in there. My lens hood had melted off at this point. My fingernails had melted and come off. Uh, yeah. I was getting a sunburn. My skin's still yellow like this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you think this is a red light behind me? This is just because of every podcast You're was the torch important. was after. It's true. Yeah. Um, no, but it was it was hot and like I I know like the A sevens will overheat, and I didn't want you know that to happen. I was thinking about bringing the seventy to two hundred out there, but. Baking a three thousand dollar lens wasn't exactly uh, not a good idea, not a good business decision either. Right, that would have taken all of you know. We would have like broke even on the project had we destroyed a three thousand dollar lens. Um, let's see here, and then still had to deliver something, so it sucked really bad. Let's see. Uh, so yeah, this is whenever you get to go out with your camera and just shoot piles of wood, just do it. Okay, let's Don't move think, on to something that's a little more it. complex here. All right, let's go. Me to black gold. A little slow motion. To endure the 14 to 16 hours of heat and smoke that it'll face, the beef must be trimmed to uniform specifications. I like this. So I got a lot of shots behind the scenes of this carving area. So we talked about in the palm reading commercial that... Uh, that scene from Pee Wee's Big Adventure was kind of like an inspir uh, was kind of like a an inspiration for me, but for this, do you remember what my inspiration was? For this, I don't remember. Sorry, that was Chad actually right now. The owner Chad just texted me because we're about to go live on this. It's true. This isn't even to the public yet. Yeah, this today is their one year anniversary, so we are releasing it live on Facebook for their one year anniversary. Uh, they just saw the final version. You so. know what? I think you're right. That's right. So here we are. We're in the carving station. I've got a 120. No. No, the 120D didn't come inside. This is a 55-watt Bolton. It's off. It's over here wedged between, and it's got that yellow gel on it to match those outside lights and keep everything kind of uh, contiguous. And we got use the 120D at all. When it's complete blackness out, you, you don't really need that much level for an A7S. We did use it outside. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. We used the spotlight. That's the spotlight, but we had the 120D outside during the daytime. I don't know if okay. you have any scene shots of it, but I know for a you fact. You are right about that. But yeah. that's at the very end. I'm talking about the nighttime. Yeah, that's right. This is all the bolts in 120. Oh, no, this is the bolts in 55-watt right. Fresnels. Just on batteries. And even though those yellow lights were up there, we still were using the spotlights for shape. 
So moving right. No, on. that light, the panel, the the post that was there was white. It looked terrible. It was like super blue. You remember? I had to cover it up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were holding a big negative there was a fill post up there, right there, yeah, right behind right. that fence, and it just destroyed the whole look. It looked terrible. So we had to cover it up, and then we added that yellow. Let's play on. The appropriate moisture content and size will become increasingly important to fuel the fire and maintain the desired temperature. Here we go. I hope the you ate is before you started watching this. Barbecue. A subtle rub of kosher salt and coarse black pepper is all it. So he's not normally doing that in there in the dark, you know. One of the things we do when we shoot is I like to go in and just turn all the lights out in the place. So I had him turn all the lights out, and then I put lights out, or our lights out, so we can get shots like this. And uh, I, I mentioned it, but I didn't say, like, I wanted, like, his like a very Breaking Bad type of look. Yeah, that's true. Cooking uh, it up. Mixing it. There's, a, there's an episode of Breaking Bad where somebody else is kind of been watching Walt uh, make the meth and uh, they think they know how to do it and they're trying to convince uh, Gus Spring that uh, they can just do away with Walter and that that guy can do it and Walter's over there you know frantically saying you know what are you going to do in the spring when the humidity goes up and your product goes cloudy how are you going to fix that and I felt like a lot of the times that Chad was talking about this process it was as serious and as exact as the chemistry that Walt would put into his meth to make the the blue meth. So I was like, you know what? That's a very good point. And I think you're right. <laughs> so I was like I was like, man, then we put some of that into the uh the voiceover too, you know, talking about the humidity and this and that. I was like, you know what? It takes time on the tools. Time on the tools. Placement for experience. Trademark. So really, it goes from inside. This is nowhere near those yellow lights that are outside, those those lights that keep the bugs away. This is inside, but I wanted it to kind of match, so we gelled the light up. Mm -hmm. We came inside. I think we double gelled it. That thing has yellow on yellow on amber to mm -hmm. make it look that way. And then this shot is in the daytime. That later, I just needed this shot, but it still kind of works. It's still, you know, it's a, you could tell it's kind of in the daytime, but yeah. you know, we color graded it. And then you can see, uh, you can see that 55 watt. There it's no right there. For you know, into the frame. A little bit. There was no replacement for experience. I didn't see that. I've seen that clip a million times. We can kind of see it peek over the fence a couple of times. Yeah. I, I don't really have too big a problem the because, like, you can't. It, the background's so blown out; it's yeah, out of focus. You, tell it's not you just a practical or something. Humidity, ambient temperature, and you want to talk sound. about Trevor? You 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 made this shot happen. Did I? Oh, that's right, I did. So there's a panel, Amber, that's right in front of me, and I'm literally holding my hands like this, and like trying to create shadows like the dancing fire because there's no light from the fire that's actually hitting these right now yeah so that's just a panel shining on them and trevor's like moving his hands around in front of the panel to create it to make it look like the just create that effect literally i'm doing this it looks like i'm like making out with the light you actually forgot about it until today when i mentioned it that's true I'm like do you realize that that's your hands i was like that. man that looks good the fire really lit that and you told of course me there's not going to be any behind the scenes that of that fire. because right. uh you were you would have been the one taking it. We don't have a dedicated behind-the-scenes photographer yet. I'm pulling. We're all pulling double and triple duty on everything. All right, so now we're in the daytime, and I did bring the 120D out to, to kind of catch glimmer off all this, that yellow, because I didn't want to just go completely from that yellow night to this. I needed some transition so that it would be more smooth so i brought the 120d out and i cranked it up as high as i could and by this point now i think it's it's gone but that way you know you get the yellow then you pull the yellow back and then it's gone completely so it's not that's our favorite line because we are on the space coast we know a lot about a decent amount nasa astronauts experience is nothing compared to what one more time. The physical examination NASA astronauts experience is nothing compared to what this meat goes through. Nothing. This <laughs> meat <laughs> is very well examined. Tell I us like a little bit about what NASA astronauts actually go through. And we'll just <laughs> I don't compare know. that. It, I think, like, if you watch the movie The Right Stuff, like the early, the original Mercury 7 astronauts, it's, it's referenced a lot in pop culture. If you watch, like, Armageddon, you know, there's a scene where, like, he goes into where the nurses are. And he's like, look, I'm just here to drill. And she's like, so am I. And she's got like this big instrument. And uh, I'm suffice to say that uh, 
NASA astronauts do go through a bit more of a physical examination right. than this meet. And it's kind of funny that we had that in the voiceover, but it's just hyperbole, you know, yeah. it's just, you know, it's funny. Like he's, he's poking and prodding Our it a little bit. Experience is nothing compared to what this meat goes through. But just not quite. He's like, he's a flight surgeon. He's like, this meets, this meets ready for takeoff. It's good for flight. Each cut of beef will be wrapped oh, in order well. to insulate and tenderize. A little audio in there. You can hear the, the sprayer and stuff. Yeah. It's just camera audio. We weren't really recording a lot. No sound design specifically. No. There's Back one piece of line. sound design in this. I love this. It's transition. Right. So and there is a timestamp down there to kind of... We kind of had a harder cut. Like, I tried to gradually bring us into the daytime, but this is just... Every night. Like just as he shuts it, yeah. boom. So this brisket's been this on this cooker all day. They've wrapped it. It's been back in. While this meat was barbecue. was being made, the meat from the prior day was being served friend. just you know in the restaurant this section of the of the area. It takes more than 24 hours in yeah. the dining room. So it's like it's it's funny. There's like overlap. This meat's getting made, and now it's about 12 hours from lunchtime the next morning when it's going to be served. So. Letting the meat rest in this hot holding cabinet. Let's talk about that shot important. for a minute. We put the spotlight outside. So we're just trying to maintain that continuity, that yellow. But also, the sun was starting to come up. When we when we're actually shooting this, the sun was coming up. I know it says, it says midnight because that's yeah. when they normally do it. But for this particular shoot, I mean, we slowed them down a little bit because we were out, you know, yeah. we're filming. Oh, do that again, do that again. Um, so bit. it's a, it's a nice shot. You've got a little bit of blue from the sky starting to happen, mm -hmm. and then you've got uh, this light coming in. So the blue and the yellow, it's complementary colors. Letting the meat rest in this hot holding yeah. cabinet is of utmost importance. And now we're we're to Without serving steps, time. Kiss that juicy, tender texture goodbye. There we go, man. The fine folks Carving that travel that. from all over to Criterman's oh, Barbecue no. may not know what all... All right, so this is like the only like produced shot in the whole thing. Factors. Well, the where we, we lit and everything for this. Yeah. This is outside and around noon, the toughest shooting conditions there are. And as you can see, everybody's well lit and looks good. Let's see some of those photos. So let me look through the behind the scenes. You said there's Worked some... hard to take those and edit those. Um, not even showing them. Okay, I think I see a behind the scenes here. There we go. Ooh. So there's that 120D. It's out. And uh, we've got a bounce card here because all the sun's coming in over here, and there's a light light color building and the street and everything. So it's just light coming in. But we are under uh, like a carport. Carport. I is mean, there it's a like dining a big, room? Well, like it's like it's just covered. It's outside, but there's a roof. Yeah. So um, let's take a look at some more. It's actually the owner's son right there, too. Oh, and then right here, there's a 4 by 6 Ultra Bounce, just bringing more light in and then putting it more directly uh, on them. Yeah, trying to pull them away a little it's bit It's definitely a much more hole. natural. Now, um, you know, as we've been putting these podcasts out, you know, we go on, on Reddit and all that, and, of course, we get uh, criticism from people. Which, you know, we love feedback, but, uh, you know... Let's be critical. Let's be realistic. Let's make it constructive. Well, you know, that's the whole, that's really the point of this whole uh, podcast is like, you know, you know, we, we, you know, we, we bought lights, we bought cameras and we, we kind of study the techniques and we go out and we put them in place. And when you first start doing this stuff, you know, the, you don't know, you don't have as much, you haven't de developed your strength. So you see like, I use like a lot of hair light, I'm using a lot of backlight, this, that, and the other, but you know. As we listen to, to critique from other people and people that are on big, bigger, much bigger productions, like like we're we're in Brevard County, Florida. We're in a small market, and uh, we're the only ones in this this immediate market that are really going through this kind of effort to get these kind of shots. Yeah, I mean, just look at the news footage that comes out of our town. People just come up with like the worst looking image of all time. Um, just panels blasting people right in the face. But uh, you see here, we're really trying to shape the light. We've got a kicker back here, you know. We've got all this going on, and I and I'm there trying to get the trying to get the look. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, 
and play it for you. It looks pretty dang good. And it's much more natural than some of our earlier stuff where we're just really just blasting. Um, and some of sometimes it's cool, like we're creating like you know this this artificial world where the, you know there's no way the lighting would ever look like that, like the the palm reading ad, mm -hmm. and that was really kind of like you know we're just indulging. There's the the liberty there to do that because of it's kind of this weird environment. Um, but then you know there's other times where we're shooting inside a car. And there's no way you would ever be like so well lit in a car. So anybody thinking about it real critically is gonna be like, well, how? How could that be? But we're just trying to make it look real pretty. But I, I think this is this is real real natural. I don't think any lay person watching this would think like, wow, they're lit up. But they know where to go when only the best will do. Just gonna be saying, man, that food looks It'd good. It'd be a real shame if you just took All right, and look at oh, there come it on down and prove it. To and I think this is uh, you know, this is what the food really looks like. Yeah, this. We is didn't have like a up. food dresser or whatever they're called. A food stylist is what they're called. Really. A food stylist. That's where they do like the shots where it's like the ice cream, but it's really mashed potatoes, or they're doing the syrup on the pancakes, but the syrup's really like, oil. like ten W forty motor oil. It's like real thick. So this is not false advertising at all. Let's talk a little bit about how much of this we ate during this project because we ate this day. We ate during a lot of our meetings with them. Mm -hmm. They just fed us. Chad we and Amy there. just said, here, you're going to have to really understand this by eating a lot of it. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and then yesterday, yesterday, yesterday we went back just uh, to, to have a meeting. And uh, they're like, you guys eating? And I had told you in the car on the way over, I'm not. Cryderman's making me fat. I'm not doing this. And then the guy, you know, Chad, delicious. Chad comes out and he's like, you guys eating? And I'm like, yep. <laughs> Said I'm definitely eating, and I need a shirt. Eating, people need to know. And you got that shirt yesterday, and you paid full Good price money. for that shirt. That's right. It's but we've never paid to it. eat there because they always take care of us. And my wife was real upset. She said, "You haven't taken me to this place. You say how amazing it is. You you didn't buy me a shirt. You bought yourself a shirt." And I said, "Listen, what an work. asshole! Just gotta do it. What an asshole! Everyone else needs to go there though and eat this food. Get yourself a shirt if you are in the area." Definitely, definitely, hold on. Definitely go get yourself some of that because it is amazing. I just had to tell you guys that yeah, in a little we, whisper. And we need to hear your whirring computer. Yeah, so I had to turn that up. Well, Trevor, I had to get a point across. Are you going to sit here and tell me? Yes. Okay, there is one thing I need to address. Okay. Now that we're here and uh, we've seen it all again, maybe it is the best. Maybe you're right. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I could learn to love you. <laughs> now, in this light, <laughs> with the water playing off your tutu, the light playing off your tutu. Well, you can deal with that. Maybe I will deal with it, Curly Jefferson. I'll deal with it the same way I dealt with Curly Jefferson. I think it's time for a Bailey's. That's right. You got a shoe ready? And if you don't get this, you should probably unsubscribe or just go watch lots of old Greg. All right, I'm taking my shoe off and uh, I'm getting ready for some Bailey's. So, That's uh, right. Creamy beige. Creamy. All right, how can we wrap this up? I think it's wrapped, dude. You got this brisket. Look, I'm going to show you where it's wrapped up. We're, this episode is as wrapped as this brisket right here. Okay, look at that. That's a wrap right there. That's a wrap. That right there, for anybody not in the business, that's a wrap. Okay, well, if you are seeing this on YouTube, know that this will also be on uh, iTunes and on podcasts everywhere. There's also a Facebook group. Um, that we are just now starting off. So definitely join us on Check Two Studios. Hey, but wait a minute. Facebook group. What if people are hearing this as a podcast and they're like, what? What are they talking about? What is all this stuff? I can't see it. I'm All I see is the road through my windshield because I'm driving, listening to this. What can they do to see this? Well, pull over, go on your phone, and pull it up on on YouTube, just search for Check Two Studios. That's not good enough, dude. Our fans, they need to go above and beyond. Get yourself the self-driving Tesla so you can watch this while you drive, dude. While it's taking you to work, that's a good idea. I'm not settling for less. If you're not watching, you're full this, of good ideas today. Look, I'm always full of good ideas. Okay, that's just the way it is. So I'm going to just say to you guys, thank you for watching Check Two uh, Studios. Shoot first, ask questions later.